Hi everyone, Brad Drew here. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Um, I wanted to share just a few things that I've learned about uh, the hotspots that we often get with our infrared images, particularly with the iPhone. Uh, but hotspots are not uh, only on iPhones. I mean, I have a Fuji uh, X-T2 converted infrared and some of the lenses on that um, will create a hotspot at certain focal lengths. So it's not an uncommon thing to see. We, we all try to avoid them when we can. But with the with the iPhone, um, you, you might get them based on the filter that you're using, um, the uh, the nanometer length and so on, uh, the width, the the uh, how wide your lens is. I find that I get uh, greater hotspots with the ultra wide lens on the iPhone than I do with the uh, the the one X or twenty four millimeter or the long lens. Um, so there are lots of different variables, even the way the sun is hitting your uh, your camera and the angle to uh, your camera. So what I wanted to do today um, is show you three different methods that I use for addressing hotspots in the work that, I, that I'm doing, because I get them too, and I um, try to avoid them, but, but can't always. So um, what I'd like to do today is... Um, is take a look at a couple of examples. And um, I'm gonna show you, this first example is one I made a, a couple of weeks ago here out on Cape Cod um, at a grist mill there. And uh, I used slow shutter um, in camera plus two for a 30 second exposure on the tripod. This is with a 720 nanometer filter. And this is what it looked like right out of the camera. Now, depending on the filter you have, I got mine from Spencer's, if you have a Hoya or, a, a one from another source, you, your coloring may look different here. Um, I also used camera plus two where I set the white balance to 1400, which will also, um, you know, change that, uh, that coloring. So if your coloring is different, don't worry about it. What I'm noticing here is that I've got a little bit brighter area right here in the image. And if I process through, process through that, it's still going to be there. So I want to show you some ways to mitigate that. There are three different um, or two different tools I use. One is Snapseed, um, which has a couple of different ways that we can go. And um, then my preferred method is Lightroom Mobile. Uh, it has a superior masking tool uh, to Snapseed. And um, I'll take you through some of that. So the first off, we'll look at this one. This is the one we'll take into um, Lightroom. Now, this was made with the Lightroom uh, camera. It's a, a five second um long exposure um you can see it's softened the water a little bit but again we've got this hot spot this is more the sky i'm not too worried about that but we've got this hot spot kind of right here you can sort of see it so um what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and get out of here and i'm going to share my uh, my phone so here it is this is the image that i want to work with i'm going to copy it and because, okay, so this is not a raw file. Because I use slow shutter and camera plus two, it's not a raw file. If it was a raw file, I'd want to process it first in either the iOS editor um, or Lightroom or something else. But um, the reason I want to talk about Snapseed is because many people don't choose to su subscribe to Lightroom. So this is an alternative method. So in this case, we don't have a raw file here. Um, so I can take it directly into Snapseed. Snapseed has a raw editor, as you may, may know, but it's I don't like it. It's not a very robust editor, in my opinion, um, and I think it's unintuitive and challenging. So I would prefer to either use the, the iOS editor right here or um, the Lightroom editor. But what I'm going to do for this one, since it's not a raw file, I'm just going to uh, copy it here and go to my Snapseed icon hold my finger down on that and paste it in to uh, Snapseed. Now, if you're not familiar with Snapseed, I'm just gonna be addressing one little piece of how to get rid of these hotspots. If you want a more comprehensive tutorial on Snapseed, um, I'll, I'll include a link to one of those in the, in the uh, video description. So here's our, here's our, um, our image. And I'm gonna start out by going down to tools. I'm gonna go up to tune image. I'm going to um, drop my saturation down to zero. And there we are. We've changed it to a, a black and white image. I might come down here to ambiance and, and lift, that, uh, lift some of those shadows up a little bit. 
I can go to highlights and lift some things there. What I'm looking at, and there's a histogram to help me down here. I'm just making sure that I don't blow out any of these areas. I want the whites to be as white as I can get them and the blacks to be um, you know, crisp and not terribly crushed um, throughout the image. So um, I might do a bunch of other things to this processing for the IR, but what I wanna do is jump right in here to how to address this hot area right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the check mark. There are two methods, but the first method that I'm gonna share with you is the one using the selective tool. So I'm gonna come down to tools and I'm going to choose the selective button. And I'll tap on this. And this is a very similar tool to something you might've used on the desktop. If you've ever used Viveza, um, you can actually drop a control point on your uh, image and then decide how much area you wanna affect. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure this little plus sign is blue. And then I'm gonna come right up in here to the center of what appears to be this hot spot, And I'm gonna drop a point. Notice it dropped it right where I put it. If I needed to, I could grab it and drag it around. Um, but I like to just kind of get it right where I want it in the beginning. So there is pretty much the center. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is take a two finger pinch. And as I pinch in, you can see, it starts out with a very large area, but as I pinch my fingers in, I'm going to pull this in so that I'm affecting more of that bright area and not so much outside of it. Now, at this point, if I take my finger and slide up and down on the screen, I can adjust all of these variables, brightness, contrast, uh, saturation, and structure. What I want to stick with right now is brightness. And if I slide my finger to the left, which I'm doing now, notice how, see how I'm darkening? If I go to the right, I can brighten that area. But if I go to the left, I can darken it down. So there's before and after. Maybe a little too dark, so I'll back it off a little bit. And, oops. Make sure that's active. And then slide to the right, and I can back it off. So now there's before and after. So you can see... I've really mitigated that a little bit in that area. What I might do, because this area is elongated and it kind of reaches up into here, I might go ahead and tap on that and I can copy that select point that I just put and then I can drop it on another part of the image. So I'm gonna drop one maybe right here. And this can be, there we go. You tap to get the paste button and then you paste it in. And then again, you can you can drag it around. It's sometimes they're really temperamental to get a hold of them. There we go. You can drag them around and put them like where you want them. So I'm gonna go right there. It copied the the, the adjustment to the uh, brightness, but what it didn't copy is the area. So I have to take my two fingers again and bring it down to the area that I want affected. Um, I might even um, do one more over here and also move that in. And I might even do one right up here like that. Whoops. There we go. Something like that. And I'll bring it down. So now if we look at, if I hold my finger down, I can remove those. There's before and after. So there's before and there's after. So I've just toned it down a little bit. So if I click the check mark and commit to that, now I've got a much more balanced um area of, of lighting to work. Now I can continue with whatever other editing I want to do when I lift my highlights or my shadows or whatever. It's going to affect this way all the same way. Um, so let's look at another mess method. I'm just going to go in here and um, undo some of this stuff here so we can kind of start fresh. So there's there's where we are. We've still got this area that's hot here. So another method that I'm going to use, I'll go to my tools. I'll choose Tune Image, and this time what I'm going to do is kind of zoom in on that area, and I'm just going to look at this area, and I'm kind of looking up here, and I'm looking down here, and I want this to sort of match this. So I could lift this a little bit. That would be one way, or I could try and bring this down. So what I'm going to do is um, take my finger and drag it across the screen, and I'm watching. I'm going the wrong way. I'm gonna, I want to darken this area. So as I bring my finger to the left, I'm watching that area right there and it's getting down closer to the tone that I want it to be. Now, I've darkened the whole image, which is not what I wanna do. So what I'm going to do here 
is hit the check mark and I've committed to that darkening of the whole image. But what I want to do is just darken this area. So I'm going to come up here to the history icon, choose view edits, and I'm going to tap on this tune image adjustment. If I tap on it, I've got three options. I can go back into the, uh, the adjustment and move the sliders around a little bit and tweak things. I could throw it away, but what I want to do is use the brush, which is the masking tool in Snapseed. Now watch the image. Right now you're seeing it hold a darkened image throughout. When I tap the brush, now it's showing me that image, but that darkness hasn't been added yet. Snapseed is waiting for me to tell it, where do you want that darkness to be? Down here, that darkness is set to 100%. So if I take my finger and if I turn on this little blue eyeball here, make it blue by tapping on it, now I can kind of zoom in a little bit and I can take my finger and just paint in over that area. Now, because the blue eyeball is on, I can see my the pink marking. If I turn that off, now we're seeing the actual um, adjustment that's there. So I don't know if it'll give me, yeah, it won't let me do before and after here, but you can see how by painting in uh, the blue eyeball. Now, I just touched down here by mistake. So to erase that, I'm gonna go down here to where it says 100, and I'm gonna drop that value all the way down to zero and just go in and erase that. So um, let me just erase this whole thing. So now you can see how bright it is there. The other thing we could do here, um, when it comes in, it comes in, in saying you're, you're about to put 100% of that darkening that you that you did in Tune Image, wherever you want it to be. Well, maybe I don't want 100%. Maybe I want to dull it down a little bit. So I'm going to drop it down maybe to, let's go 50%. And now I'm going to come in here and you can see the pink is a little less bright. And I'm just going to hit those areas um, that are most bright. And now if I switch to turn the blue eyeball off, we'll turn the pink off. Now you can see it's, I've, I've softened how much I brought it down. It looks much better, but I think it actually needs to be a little bit more. So I'll bump it up to 75. And then I'm going to go in here and paint over that area. And now I've got 75% and I'll turn off the blue area. And you can see now it's fairly balanced throughout the image. Um, let's see. That's it. I mean, that's basically it. So I'll go ahead and commit to that. And now there's our adjustment, that tune image adjustment. If I tap on this layer in Snapseed, I can turn this layer off and we can do a before and after. So there's without the adjustment, see how bright it is. And there's with the adjustment. And you may tweak this a while until you get it just right. Maybe that looks a little too gray, but now you can go back in and do a, a global adjustment over the whole thing. And you could bring your your highlights up. Um, you could drop your shadows down a little bit or up a little bit rather to get some of this uh, darkness out of here. And now you're starting to get a much more balanced uh, black and white without that real hot spot in the center. Um, all right, so that's it for Snapseed. So two methods, one using the selective tool, the other using the masking tool uh, that you find up here in the history button. So let's go now, I'm just gonna go out to Lightroom and I've kind of got this queued up, I believe. Yeah, so here's an image. Um, this is what it looked like. That's the one I showed you before. I'm just holding my finger down. That's the before. And I've already gone through my, my editing process and gotten it to where pretty close to where I want it to be by making my standard adjustments here. And if you wanna, I, I've covered these in other webinars and things that I've done. If you wanna check those out, um, there's one on just using Lightroom and the sequence that I that I use for both for color and black and white. The only difference is with the black and white, the IR images, we convert them, uh, eliminate the color either by dropping the saturation or hitting the black and white button here in the color tool. But what I want to do now is go and get rid of this hotspot. So what I'm going to do is slide all the way over here and I'm going to tap on masking. So here's masking and if you've not used this, again, I've got a tutorial on Lightroom that goes through a lot of this. I'll include those links uh, in the description here. But um, 
what we're going to do to add a mask here is tap the plus sign. And there are several things you could do. You could select the subject. You could select the sky. You could brush in the area you want to affect. What I want to do is choose a radial gradient. So I'm going to tap radial gradient. And I'm choosing radial because this is kind of a round spot or oval at least. So what I'm going to do is take my finger in the center there and just drag out that radial gradient. So now the area that's going to be affected by whatever adjustment I make to light or color or um, excuse me, sharpening or anything is only going to affect what's inside that circle. So what I'm going to do, the other thing I want to do is tap on my uh, density here and I want to make sure that I've feathered out my edge. So right now I'm at a maximum feathering. If I drop this slider down, um, oops, let me grab hold of it. There we go. See, now I have a really hard edge and we don't want that because we want this, we want the change to be very subtle, not a hard line. So I'm going to bring this slider back up. So now I have this very soft edge. So now I'm going to go down here to light and I've got these controls. And what I want to do is darken that area that's bright in the center to match the rest of the image. So I'm going to start by just taking my exposure down a little bit. And it doesn't take much. I mean, if I go too far, you can see what I've done. If I go this way, I've done the wrong thing. So what I want to do is just take it down just those few degrees necessary. And then you can tap on the screen to put that away. And you can see how we've mitigated that a little bit. Um, to show before and after, I'll go back to the thumbnail here, tap on that, and I can I can hide that adjustment. So there's without, you see the bright spot, and then if I turn it back on, there's with. So we've really done, it's a subtle thing, but it makes a huge difference in, in the way your images look in the end. Um, let's say, you know, um, if we look at this, maybe we're still seeing a little bit of a bright spot in the bridge. Well, what you can do for that is do another mask by tapping the blue plus sign. This, this time I'm gonna choose the brush. I'll zoom in here and I'm just gonna, I don't zoom in too much. I'm just gonna paint over that bridge. And now I can go to the light on the bridge and I can drop the exposure a little bit, kind of darken the bridge if I want. I could go into my effects here give the bridge a little more texture than everything else and a little clarity. So now I think we've gotten rid of that hot spot um, by just those few little changes. Really powerful um, way to do this. And I use it on many of my images um, that I've taken with uh, with the iPhone. I've actually used it, uh, I've, I've brought my big camera images uh, and, and used it here. If you use desktop, Lightroom, a uh, very similar process uh, works there. You simply put a mask over that area. You want to correct, make sure it's a soft edge, and then very carefully um, look for that sweet spot that gives you the same balance inside and outside of the hot spot. All right, that's it. It was a uh, promise short and sweet, and um, I appreciate you watching. And um, I hope uh, this uh, you know helps you with the, the work that you're doing. Um, and um, I'll post this out on our um, uh, Facebook group uh, where we have an infrared group. For those of you who, who aren't uh, part of that group, uh, I encourage you to go out and check it out. You know, there's we've got over a thousand people now, um, many of them active in producing uh, infrared images. We've got a wide range of things going on there. We've got some beginners and we've got some people that have been at it uh, for going on three years now and are doing some remarkable work. So I uh, hope you'll check it out. You're welcome to join if you like. It's an open group. And um, if you have any questions about any of this, uh, I invite you to give me a call or, or text me or uh, email or whatever. Um, when I'm home and not traveling, I, I, I'm doing this full time and I love sharing what I know and I'm happy to, uh, to share with you. So thanks for watching. And until next time, keep on creating.